What's going on, Ambitious Vet? Welcome to episode number 48 of the Ambitious Vet Show with U.S. Air Force officer retired and founder of the Rollers Game Company, Matt Butler. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet, where we believe if you desire more, you have to become more. My name is Chris Hoffman, Marine Combat Veteran turned passion driven entrepreneur. On this show, I dive into the trenches with today's top military veteran, thought leaders, and influencers who know what it takes not only to pay the bills after the military, but really make an impact. They're going to share their breakdowns, their breakthroughs, and even their secret formulas for you to follow in your pursuit of living a life of passion and impact that will leave you empowered to take action on your next mission. All right, Ambitious Vet, before we go ahead and dive into the church with Matt Butler, I just want to say thank you. Why? Because you're listening to this. Whatever you're doing, you're listening to this. I do not take it for granted for what you put between your two ears. I think really the information that you put in between your two ears is what makes or breaks your daily progress or your daily um you know, digresses in some cases. But I, I just want to ask you a question. I mean, are you dealing with fog in your life? Maybe just a little bit lost, or maybe you're just confused on how you execute your next mission in your life. Well, I want to tell you about um, my sniper-like focus strategy sessions that I would like to have you, which is completely free for you guys. And it really is designed just for you to get really clear on what is that very next mission and start even having seeing new actions to take that you can execute on so you can start developing the skill sets, building the networks, and and um, just building out the tools that you need to feel like you're you're living a life of impact, guys. If that's you, I want you to click the link in the show notes below and schedule that free 15-minute call with me and let's narrow the gap and you aiming down range and hitting black every time. Are you ready? We'll see who is. All right, Ambitious Fed, are you ready to dive in the trenches with Matt Butler? Well, Hold your horses. Before we do that, let's figure out who he is. Matt recently retired last September after serving over 20 years in the U.S. Air Force. Matt spent the majority of his career flying aboard a reconnaissance aircraft called Joint Stars. Matt's been on 10 deployments over his career to various contingency hotspots around the globe. Matt is also the creator of the outdoor game Rollers, which is a blend of other traditional outdoor leisure games like Boshu Ball, Horseshoes, and Bowling. Matt said the concept came to him on one of his deployments when he was missing, hanging out with friends and family back home. When he returned from the deployment, he developed a prototype in his garage, which was well-received at barbecues, parties, and tailgating-type events. Now, he's went from selling it at local art and craft fairs to working with some of the biggest retailers in the industry, like Amazon, Walmart, and many other sporting goods spots like Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, Gander Outdoors. Now, guys, get this. Rollers has now been on many of the large media outlets like CNBC, Forbes, Inc. Magazine, GQ, Entrepreneur Magazine, Forbes, Fox & Friends, The Wall Street Journal, and The Today Show three times and many more. Guys, what I love most about this interview that we're about to dive into is Matt. Even though he's gained all these new trophies out of 20, 20 years of wearing the uniform, Guys, you're going to hear a man, Midwestern boy, that is just, in his mind, getting started at a beginner's mind and not not afraid to really pay to play. So guys, I love this episode. He really paints the picture, the perspective of what it takes from um, creating an idea, an ambitious idea of desiring more and and getting that aha moment right and then what is the process of executing on a ambitious idea guys without further ado let's go ahead and dive into the trenches with matt butler matt are you there brother yeah i am chris i appreciate you having me on thanks so much it's awesome brother we're 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 honored to have you on so if you could just so graciously fill the gaps in that and have us get to know you a little bit more out of that introduction Sure. I mean, I think you've got a lot of a lot of all the main points in there. 
A um, little bit about, uh, about myself. I uh, entered into the Air Force. I did the ROTC program in college. And uh, then I started on a four-year commitment of the Air Force. And uh, right on my last year, close to it, I was planning on actually transitioning out of the military and looking at some other type of uh, technical type work. Uh, I studied a lot of computers. I studied physics for undergrad degree and did uh, computer science as well. But September 11th happened and I was actually stationed overseas. I was in Italy. So I, I'm watching the Air Force Network or the Armed Forces Network, uh, AFN, and I'm watching all of this unfold. And uh, Due to that, I ended up, I stayed in. I thought there's no way that I could get out of the military after seeing such, you know, the tragic events unfolding and everybody is rushing into the military. And so I stayed in and I had a, a chance to fly on what you mentioned earlier is a, it's a large 707 aircraft. It's called Joint Stars and it's a reconnaissance surveillance uh, information platform. Wow. And it's, uh, one of the only joint uh, service aircraft out there. So I actually flew with, uh, fellow Marines like yourself, uh, Army, I sat next to an Army officer, Intel officer. So I've got a little bit of purple joint flavor flowing through my, my blood here. And, you know, after um, flying on board the aircraft, I got several thousand combat hours and 10 deployments under my belt. And then before you know it, I was at 20 years. And that, that wow. was my, that's kind of summarizing my military career. Wow, that's crazy. And, um, you know, what I love about bringing you in here, Matt, is that you did do 20 years in the Air Force, right? And it's just like, you know, so many ambitious vets. I mean, I did four, four, four in, four out, right? Like it was, it was uh, kind of like, I always say that anybody that's retired out of any branch of service is, is it's kind of like you're, you're more man than I was, right? And um, when you talk about doing 20 years, I mean, you're still getting out and you're still figuring out how to become better, which is absolutely amazing. So I would just ask you, um, tell us a little bit about your transition story, being be, serving 20 years in the Air Force. Um, tell us a little about getting out after 20 years and being so integrated inside of the Air Force. So that transition is still unfolding right now since I just recently retired in September. And uh, when I first conceived the game, as he mentioned earlier, on one of the deployments, I came home and prototyped the game in 2010. So, I mean, that was nine years ago when I first started with rollers uh, in my garage. And that was just a, a journey that I didn't expect to travel down that road. A lot of it just started unfolding in front of me little by little as I, as I learned through it. But I always thought I've got, um, I'll always need to, I will leave the service at some point, And so I will have to transition. And what did I plan on doing? Um, and, and it was never rollers. That wasn't the expectation. It was, uh, I just kept grinding little by little and seeing things uh, making money. And then I would just reinvest that money back into it. What was helpful to me at the time was because I was still in the Air Force, I had something to fall back on because I was working both jobs, essentially. Yeah. At the same time, it was really difficult because it was a grind. I mean, it was coming home and then working on it late at night. All of my weekends were gone and working on that. So it's a, it's a lot that goes into any type of business. But uh, if you are able to start it, uh, any of the listeners that if you are in the service or you have another job, um, see if you can do both things at once. See if you can juggle both. At some point, it may become unmanageable, but it's it's definitely something worthwhile. It's a little bit of risk mitigation in regards to you have a couple things ongoing. Uh, yeah. But for my transition, it, it's still a little difficult. I'm so used to, I was used to for the 20 years going in and hanging out with my brothers and sisters in arms, you know, chatting in the morning over coffee and seeing what the plan is for the day. And I, I really miss that. That was one of my struggles the most because right now I'm very mobile because we have, you know, the internet and computers and I'm able to really, I can operate in a hotel room. I go to a lot of trade shows. I can operate, you know, in my condo. 
but it's just not the same as just, you know, you and I just seeing what's the plan for the day? What are we going to do? We're going to do some training. Are we going to go practice a mission or so I, I do miss that. And, um, you know, I, the, the best that I can do is continue to, to network with people like yourself and, and go to shows where we met at the military influencer conference and just stay connected to, to other veterans and specifically veteran entrepreneurs. I mean, it's, there's some of the best kinds out there that I've met. I mean, networking with them, everyone's so gracious with their time. Everyone's trying to help each other. And I think it's because of that military training and mentality, they don't wanna see anybody fail whatsoever. So I have, like I said earlier, uh, when we were chatting before, I haven't seen anyone ever say no to me if I reach out and ask for something. They might be too busy and say, I can't do it now, but I'll get to you later, man. But you know, we're, we're in a great, little network and the Facebook group that you have is phenomenal. I mean, I've reached out several times uh, with questions and, you know, within minutes I start seeing answers flowing across there. So it, it's, it's a great little tribe. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. And we're honored to have you a part of the tribe. And Ambitious Vets, um, either if you're listening on the podcast or watching live or you're doing the replay later on, these are the kind of sharks that hide out in the ocean that you guys don't know that's inside of the inside this tribe that, that you can always reach out to and connect with. But guys, sharks like this can't help if you're not willing to ask for help. And, um, you know, as I was talking to, you know, Matt before this, um, I told him I did a lot of research on him because this is, you know, Matt, uh, you know, I was on third, the third page of Google last night researching for this interview and there were still accolades like Forbes, um, you know, CBS, you know, NBC, you know, all these, I think Martha Stewart, I think you were featuring an article on Martha Stewart, man, this guy is everywhere. And it's just like, you know, even on one of the podcast episodes I listened to, I, I did my homework, Ambitious Vets, and always do your homework, especially when you're you're going to have an access to an influencer that's resourceful and can get you more opportunity in your life would be some good practical wisdom I would give to you. But I mean, even, even with that, I mean, hey, you know, it's a commonality with Maz. He's always asking for help. He's always willing to give over that ego, even though he's won all these awards in his game. I think last time I, I looked online has sold what over 65,000 units. I mean, it's probably way more than that now. <laughs> yeah, we can throw another 10,000 on top of that. We just keep going. A little That's time. crazy. Perfect. That's crazy. So guys um, just always ask for help. And as you can tell throughout this whole interview, Matt's has been very good at always seeking wise counsel, always figuring out how does he learn and, and all that. And I really want you guys to soup that up. So Matt brother, I mean, you were, you kind of started this company while you were, well, you didn't kind of, you did start the company while you were inside of the air force. And I just, I want to hear like, what had you, be like, this is it. What was, what was the moment where you were just like, this is my purpose. This is what I'm committing to. Because obviously when you got a sense of purpose, you're not so scared about security and stability when you get out of the uniform. Right. Right. Yeah. There was a, I would say the light bulb idea probably sparked about the time. So initially, and if anyone has a product and you want to get feedback, your friends and family are always a good start, but you always want to have people that are independent from your friends and family because they're going to give you their true opinion on that. And the opinion of that is would they buy a product or not? And when I say product, it could also be a service as well. You might provide a service as somebody willing to actually open up their wallet and give money for that. So one of the ways that I wanted to see if this is truly something worthwhile to sell and make money from is I started going to arts and craft fairs and I went to a, a church fair with about 50 units that were made and uh, within the first day I sold out and how I sold out was not something that I planned out a lot of these things are not things that I strategized and said I have the answers to everything in the grand plan for this. I came across them a little bit by ac accident, but then as I looked back, I understand why they happened. Mm -hmm. And for the reason why we sold out is somebody asked if they could actually play the game outside in the yard in front of the church. And so now I had free advertising ongoing and people were talking about it outside and giving it a try. So the first place that they stopped in is Where's the guy with that game that people are rolling outside? And so before you knew it, they were all sold. And yeah. that's when that light bulb had just turned on and said, 
I might have something here. I took that money, reinvested it back in, doubled down, you know, had 100 made and then 200 made. And then the first year I sold about 300 units. And that's what I just, I kind of just reinvested it over and over. And um, I did things every way, way that I could figure I could cut cost, I did. Uh, when I went into retail, it was a little bit of a, I shouldn't say a mistake, but a learning process. So I reached out to uh, a magazine to ask on how much it would be to advertise in their magazine. And they turned around and told me, well, if we could write an exclusive uh, interview on you and about your product, we'll give you two pages in our magazine for free. And yeah. I thought, wonderful, I'll do that. And that's when I started learning about media and the power of marketing. And what happened there is it reached out, some retailers read that article. They were on vacation where I live in Destin, Florida, Fort Walton Beach. And uh, they asked about what's your wholesale price? I, I didn't really know about the wholesale retail market. So I had to yeah. figure out right. what are the proper margins? You know, what does, what does it need to look like on the shelves? You know, how does it advertise for itself? You know, should it come in a bag and what's the bag made out? So each one of these were just little journeys that I would go down on, on learning. And they've been fun journeys. Sometimes the journeys end in um, trouble. Maybe I misunderstood something. I mean, journeys aren't always successful, but, but I learned a lot from it. And, and that's, again, why the tribe that we're in is if somebody tr is traveling down this journey, you know, ask for help and I can tell you don't steer this direction or I can tell you you can steer this direction, but here's some hidden minds along the path that you're you're wanting to take. So, no, that's awesome. And it's just, um, you know, that's that's proof of concept, right? I mean, being able to sell out that very quickly, it's just like, wow, it's like I got something here. So it, it probably was very rewarding and fulfilling to be like, wow, like, you know, it was right in front of your eyes. And, I, you know, a lot of ambitious vets that are going to be listening to this or you know, are, are watching live or will be watching later on. I mean, think about it. What are the resources right in front of you that you're not paying attention to because you're so reactive to your life, right? I mean, it sounds like, you know, Matt, you were just excellent at like being able to see what's in front of you and the opportunities and you were present enough to be like, wow, I got something here. And then you just learned along the way and pivoted. And I think, I think that's great. And I love, I love specifically the part where, you know, you shared around just like, learning like there was a wholesale problem okay now retailers are excited well let's go and learn about that and let's learn that skill gap and stuff like that and it just sounds like you grew very quickly and you kind of grew kind of grew yourself throughout the process now was there i would just ask i mean was there any sense of self-doubt that you had to deal with in that at all oh the, the thing is i'm my worst critic and so that's the thing. another thing is you have to also get thick skin too a little bit. Yeah. Some people have it, some people don't have it. I don't think I initially had it, but it just started to get thick over time. And so you just you just have to, there's a lot of self-doubt that comes in my mind. I mean, sometimes even for this interview, I'll say, did I say the right thing? You know, I should have said this, you know, is, is my packaging where it needs to be for this retailer? Should I change something? Somebody left me a review, should I go with what they're saying? I, I get self-doubt all the time, but that is one of the things that I'll talk about later on um, about some golden grenades, but about having advisors and mentors is, mm -hmm. is really important. Having people that you trust that you can bounce ideas off of. And I know you have those, those mentors and people helping guide you that you learn from that you trust. And, and that's important. Absolutely. That community around you. Absolutely. It gets me unstuck. For me, I mean, I'm my own worst enemy and I'm the lid to what I'm doing. And whenever I have wise counsel, mentor, I, have a, I had a business coaching conversation today for my business coach. And, she, and within 30 minutes, I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm not owning my value in here, here, here. This is my action steps for the next week. And this gets you unstuck because if you're probably, you're, if you're in your own head, you can only think so much. But when you got diversified thinking, new ideas, you know, there's new actions that can take. So I love that about you. So, um, Matt, there's going to be a lot of ambitious vets inside of your brother that, um, you know, have an idea, want to invent something or move forward with something bigger than themselves. Let's face it. When we get out of the uniform, we're chasing something that is bigger than us. Right. And one thing I love about, you know, the roller story so much is that it's, it, it it's mission, man. And, um, 
you know, just how you're so driven on getting people off the couch, off social media and really engage in conversations that matter and build relationships, which I can, I, I can definitely identify with being a Midwestern boy myself. And, um, you know, I want to, I want to ask you this question. I mean, for any ambitious vet that's out there right now that has an idea, um, has an idea for an invention or something like that, or a business idea or just a side passion project they want to create on the side of their career. I mean, how did you take rollers from, you know, idea to actually executing on it? Can you walk us through that process? Yeah, I guess it reminds me of the saying, how do you eat an elephant? And you say one bite at a time. That's really how you have to go about any of this. Uh, and it's also no different than what we've learned in the military about uh, prior to going out on a mission or doing anything, there's, uh, there's planning. Prior planning before you go, you're not just going to go and do it and execute right off the bat. And you're going to learn from it. You're going to train for it. and You're going to practice it. And then you're going to debrief from it. And so there's a whole process that goes into that. Now, that, that still goes into any product or service. You want to evaluate your, your landscape, for example. Maybe you want to evaluate, do I have the right price structure in place? So you want to go, so what did I do? I looked into retailers like Target and sporting goods stores what seems to be the right price point? And then I would ask, I asked the manager, do you know how much you buy those games for? What is the wholesale price of that? That's how mm -hmm. I started learning that process. And then you have the cost of goods. And so that's, that's how I did it just one step at a time. I learned about packaging and different materials. I didn't know about that before. And so what I would say to you guys um, listening just take one step at a time and maybe maybe come up with a plan on how you want to learn. And, and again, like I said, you can ask the tribe, ask for help in the tribe for direction. Uh, ask me, you know, look me up, uh, email me through, the, through my website, rollers.com. I would be willing to help you. And it's just direction. And I know there's probably a lot of people that are there that have the idea and they're just looking for just that little push forward just to say, I know you can do this, give them some confidence and give them some resources. And if that's where you're at, I mean, you've got a tribe to help you out. And, and I would just say, you know, we are risk adverse. I mean, some, some are, some are, but you want to, you're not going to throw everything, all your eggs in one basket. You're, you're going to plan something out and strategize it, but, but reach out for help. And I know a lot of times veterans don't want to reach out for help. They feel like that might be a weakness because they're asking. It's not weakness whatsoever. Just think of it as a team or a bonding and you're going out there to ask, will you be in the Air Force? They always called it the wingman. So you're back, yeah. whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it goes to spouses and anyone. I mean, anyone, anyone's welcome. I mean, everyone's here willing to help. Yeah, whatever allows your ego to to lower. It's it's my it's my wingman, right? Yeah, so I love it, and that's that's over ten combat deployments right there. Uh, you know, just telling you like ask for help, right? I mean, um, you know, it's it saved my life literally a couple times just through asking for help and 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 doing that whole process. So guys, definitely don't be a, afraid to do that. So. Brother, before we get to the the three golden grenades, tell us about rollers, man. Tell us about, you know, you, know, you kind of dove into, you know, kind of where the idea was formulated and how it took off. But what is the vision of rollers and what is the problem that you're looking to solve with this amazing game? Sure. So to, to even explain what rollers is in general, um, I enjoy growing up in the Midwest, played a lot of yard games. And this is before the the time when I was younger, they didn't have a PlayStation and the computers and everything like that. So uh, my mom and dad were saying, you know, get outside and play, you know, build a tree house or do something like that. So I played a lot of uh, bocce ball, which is an Italian game. Uh, I played a lot of horseshoes, which is more of an American game. There's other games that kind of fall in place to rollers. There's like a French game. It's called Petanque. You could do feather bowling, which is Belgium. There's a bunch of games. So I took problems of different yard games that I didn't like. For example, horseshoes. You're going to take a large metal stake and pound it into the ground with a sledgehammer, and then you're going to sling metal horseshoes at people, and then you get hit, hit in the shin, and then it hurts. <laughs> so, you know, um, I mean, bocce are heavy for kids. I mean, they're 25, 30 pounds sometimes. I love playing bag toss, cornhole. I mean, that's good too, but I mean, those boards can be heavy if you make them out of some, you know, heavy two by fours, and it's a lot to lug around. It doesn't fit in your 
uh, trunkier car. So, I mean, I'm just taking different little problem sets and just fused it into one single game. And that's really what Rollers is. It's, it's a lightweight, leisure, uh, easy game to learn and play. And, and that's why I created it, uh, because I just took a bunch of different items that I didn't like about. And that's, that's really what products are. I mean, products a lot are, are reinvented. New, each product is reinvented in a new way. And, and so you're just making them better in a way. And I shouldn't necessarily say that I think that Rollers is better than anything else. I, I just think that it's something nice to add to your inventory and a different way to play something. So um, that, that's how it came about. No, that's amazing. And uh, it reminds me of this net Netflix show that I just started watching called, I think it's called Creatives. Don't quote me, but just type in creative on Netflix, Ambitious Vets. And it talks about how some of the most inventive minds, innovative minds in the world, and Matt, you'll appreciate this, brother, is that, um, you know, they, they, they pull off other inventors' ideas before them. And it allows you to kind of hear the, the new market, the new the complaints. I mean, um, I took a business course like two years ago that says, if you ever want to start a business is go out in the world and start hearing what people are bitch moaning, complaining about. Right. And right. it's just yeah, and to start a business around you, just solving a problem. And it just sounds like brother, you, you know, you were raised in, um, a, a very traditional, um, Midwestern family that just valued family and communication and outdoors fun and stuff like that. And you just piggybacked right off some ideas and you saw a clear need. And it's, it's good to see, man, because this game is, is everywhere now. So, I mean, you're, aren't you guys working on patents, like patents, like internationally now? So, yeah. And I, I love to talk to Andy and Andy's been a, a huge help. Um, yeah. Bouncing again, part of the tribe, bouncing ideas off of. So we've got two uh, patents and uh, registered trademark in the U.S. We also have an international patent pending. We have registered trademarks in Canada, New Zealand, uh, <laughs> Australia, and the European Union. So, I mean, because we started distributing over in Europe and it's distributed in Canada, I'm looking at Australia, New Zealand, and looking at different different areas to distribute. And as you saw, the one game that uh, you guys played, we're, we're into collegiate licensing now. We've got a uh, partnership with a another company to help out with that. So now we're looking at customization. I'm looking at a higher end version of rollers, like maybe a dark stained wood with a higher end bag. Wow. Uh, maybe looking at a lower end to get to a lower price point. So, but again, you're not gonna throw all your eggs in one basket and go in there without doing your due diligence because what I'm doing is I'm finding out is that worthwhile for me to invest time and effort into something because there might not be something there you know just because you get one person says they want to do something doesn't mean the mass majority of everyone else is going to want that exact same thing too but i like that idea that you said about taking people's problems i feel like you could you could we need to get a room full of people and just listen to all of their problems and then we'll just start creating solutions and that's how businesses will start to be formed or products or services so mm. yeah, wouldn't that be one. awesome a new think tank or mastermind yep. yeah there you go that's so cool brother so yeah awesome i mean i i love it i mean it's taken it's taken off and the cool thing is is matt's uh, gracious enough for any ambitious vet that's listening to this in 10 countries that we reach um, and you're listening to this in your ears, on your run or whatever, I'm asking you guys, put in your calendar. If you carry a little notepad like I do to capture ideas or things to do, write this on a piece of paper because Matt's actually going to be doing a special offer for the Ambitious Vet Movement. And Matt, do you want me to talk about it or do you want to announce what you're doing? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. You can yeah. So guys, I mean, you know, Matt's, uh, what he's doing is he's offering completely free shipping wherever you're at for the rollers game guys and uh you know i played this on you know during the rose bowl we were tailgating the game was so fun that we didn't want to go watch the rose bowl they playing the game was probably better than watching washington and ohio state i promise you and it's funny because josh prado i was playing josh prado from vetted talent network out here in san diego he kicked my ass at the game but it was it was so much fun and uh you know matt he's uh he's gracious enough to do completely free 
shipping. Um, I, we're going to post the link in the comments below and in the show notes below for anybody that wants to get your rollers game. I mean, spring, summer is right around the corner. And for anybody in the Midwest that's listening to this or, you know, out here in California, it's spring pretty much year round. Go and grab it now. Get it into the you know beaches. Get it out in the parks, guys. And uh, get out there and start rolling on, as, as, as Matt would say. <laughs> you got anything to add to that, brother? I like it. No. Yeah. Get rolling. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So brother, let's uh let's finish this up to the whole traditional way of the ambitious vet show. What are three golden grenades that you would provide to any ambitious vet right now in the trenches that's looking to elevate their impact or just maybe be more effective in life? What would be three golden grenades you could drop down right now for them? Yeah, I've got three and I was trying not to state them or say them ahead of time because I, I had them in mind. They're pretty important to me. And and I, and I knew that you would be having these three at the end here. And as I said, I've been listening to, you know, your podcast quite a bit. And I listened to Dan this morning and Charlinda, I listened to her yesterday. And so I love those and, and everyone else's golden grenades I almost need to take all of them and make even like a book or something with all these different ones, but they're, they're great. It's like a great summary. Um, the one, the first one I have is, is probably something that many people have heard but I'm going to say it again, because if you're having people say this over and over again, there must be something behind that. And it's very important for you to have a mentor. And when I, when I say that, I think people kind of throw that around loosely, but I want to just dive a little bit further into that. And so you always, I mean, you want to get advice from people that are in your space. That's why large corporations have board of advisors and people that are out there that specialize into whatever their special skill set is. Is it marketing? Is it finance? Is it uh, logistics? I mean, so you want to have some, the hope, probably somebody that's older, may not be older, but somebody that has that resident skill set and already the knowledge and maybe, you know, a decade or some time involved into that. I have one and I don't even, I don't want to share that person because they're so good. They have been in the space and they uh, have, have just been killing it. And I love to get advice. And I always thought I'm never going to be able to give advice back to this person. Well, you, you will at some point, and I, and I have um, been able to um, give advice back to that person in what I learned along my journey too. And so that felt good to be able to give that back after receiving so much. Um, and then what they told me one time is then pay it forward and pay that to the next person on. Maybe you can't I might already have those lessons learned, but take those, harness them, pass that on to the next person. And so uh, that's what hopefully you do. Find a good mentor in your industry. Again, um, just ask for advice from somebody. And I think that that natural relationship will, will come to fruition. Um, I've even reached out to people that I felt were competitors and we have a great relationship uh, and I don't look at it as really as competition. Um, so that's, that's my advice. My golden grenade is find a mentor, mentorship. Uh, the second one is being deliberate. And when I say being deliberate, it's deliberate with your time. It's, it's deliberate with your health, going and working out, deliberate um, mentally through if it's yoga or if it's for whatever it is. Be deliberate, have fun. Be deliberate, being positive. Don't be negative. But what I'm saying is you have to plan things out. Don't let life run you. You want to control and harness your life. Plan it out, be deliberate on your time management. Do you want to spend three hours watching TV? I mean, I don't watch as much TV. I, I might watch a little bit more now that I'm retired and doing rollers. But before, I really didn't watch as much TV. And so all of the things... And all the people are probably, I'll tell you, I haven't watched Game of Thrones and I've heard it's awesome, but I just <laughs> haven't got to it. I will get to it. But I mean, I'm deliberately not watching it because I am now getting into the very, very busy season of rollers because it's very seasonal. So now I just need to, to crush it, but I'm being deliberate. The third is being a master of your space of whatever you're in. So I'm in the space of outdoor games, yard games, beach games. And I'm going to master it. I'm going to kill it in that in that space. That's the only way that I can think of to do it is just destroy it, and knock it out of the park. There's all sorts of other veteran entrepreneurs I've, I've met that are out there along the way, and they're killing it in their space. And that's what you need to do. And there's so many different service and products out there. I've come across, you know, we've got 
You've got bottle openers, you've got bottle breachers, you've got flip-flops, you've got combat flip-flops, you've got energy drinks, strike force energy, you've got soap bars with K-bar soap. I mean, I can go on. You've got, you know, sauces with Charlinda. Uh, you've got different barbecue sauces from other people, uh, candle company, t-shirts. I mean, we can go through all sorts of them. Forged, Article 15, um, Industry thread uh, Threadworks, uh, Grunt Style. I mean, I'm wearing one here. I mean, so the, the, the thing is, own your domain and own whatever you're in. And it might be small. I, you know, yard games is a very small niche area, but I just want to dominate in there. And I don't know really anyone else that's in that space. And so learn as much as you can about it. So I know if you're, if anyone were to ever name an outdoor game, I would find it hard to believe. And I'll give you a roller set. If you can find a game that is, that's in the public domain, that I don't know about. I know, you know, where it's manufactured, what their price points are, you know, where it sells. I mean, I got to own that domain. And that's, that's my advice is whatever it is that you want to get into. And I just named off a bunch of different companies and I know there's a lot more and I apologize if I forgot you, but I was just spit, get spitballing some, some companies, but it could be anywhere. It, it could be any type of, I mean, I've seen hats and purses and jewelry and, and so, own it. That, that's, that's my golden grenade for my third one there. So mentorship, being deliberate and own your domain. That's amazing. That, I, I love, I love all three of them, man. I think that any ambitious vet that's listening to this could definitely do a lot more of taking extreme ownership towards what their passion projects are and what that would look like. And I think that would open up a tremendous amount of just new actions to take, man, um, new partnerships to create, networking and stuff like that. So ambitious vet, if you even have an idea for a lawn game or an outdoor game, I would definitely obviously utilize Matt's expertise, wisdom. I mean, this guy has been building this dream for what now, nine, 10 years, Matt? Ten years, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you know, lean on wisdom, right? That's that's what narrows time frames for you executing on your next mission, ambitious vet. So Matt, brother, I just want to acknowledge you, man. I mean, for who you are, I mean, um, I was humbled to say the least to go, you know, last night and, and research and by the third page of Google, see that like you've been everywhere, man, you've been featured everywhere, you've done everything. And this goes to show, you know, interviewing you and looking at you right now, how humble and how much even with the success that you have right now, you, you are just a guy that's still at the beginner's mind of, of this whole thing. And I think that's what the veteran community as a whole is missing is this like, how do I consistently stay humble, stay in a beginner's mind and you lead by example, man, it goes to show. That's why everyone wants to work with rollers and Matt Butler, man. So I, I really do appreciate you joining us live and on the podcast and all that. It's been amazing. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Uh, I mean, I hope that uh, anyone listening now or into the future that, that I gave some helpful tips and just hopefully just some motivation to push you along to whichever journey you decide to take. Awesome. Well, there you have it, Ambitious Vet. Episode number 48 of the Ambitious Vet Show. What did you think of the the Golden Grenades? Um, you know, they are starting to catch storm. You know, we're 48 episodes in and a lot of you guys are just like, I love the Golden Grenades. And it sounds like these Golden Grenades from these military infantry are really um, equipping you guys for success, more fulfillment, um, more happiness and all that in every area of your life. And, um, you know, that's why this ambitious vet podcast exists. So guys, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you took away from these golden grenades. I want to know what you're going to, you know, apply for this next week from this podcast, because wisdom is great. But, um, you know, implementation, like action, execution, all that is what creates results, right? So let's be in action. Let's be utilizing the golden grenades, guys. Um, as always, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. If you're new, hopefully this you found value in this. Um, feedback is what allows anything to improve in life. And I want to improve right beside you. So guys, let's meet in the middle and let's get better together in the trenches. Sound good? Lastly, we already know that you're warrior made, but to become passion driven, just utilize this one golden grenade you heard today, and I promise you, you'll be living that more meaningful, impactful, and top performing civilian life. Let's go get it.